this is the most broken jungler in the game, and I'm going to show you why in this video. Yeah, she doesn't sit atop the win rate charts, the play rate charts, the tier list, even my own tier list, because Belveth is actually technically the most broken. But this one is free. Free for your LP, free in the enemy's headspace, mine included, that's why this video is now existing. And in 25 minutes, I'm going to show you how, basically, you can run over any game with it. You can full clear, you can skirmish, your damage is obscene, you've got a lot of CC. But the most obnoxious thing, personally for me, is that I've unloaded a combo upon Lilia, thinking, yes, I've got her now. And then she runs away. And if she doesn't run away, you see that? You see that healing? That healing is the problem. The healing needs to go down. Because a champion with this much damage should not be able to heal as much as she does. Counterpoint, you can give her less damage and keep the heal. One of those two things needs to happen. Because the champion scales way too hard with Leandris, with Demonic. We have a Dark Harvest build here. Yeah, you can rush the Demonics. There's some other tech, more fightery, bruisery tech builds you can go. Which, you know, you lose a bit of damage, but you gain even more durability. Against certain comps, that will be helpful. But you can see here now... As we path upside, the Graves is crossing at what was... What the hell is the Graves crossing time? If you want help implementing this information into your own game, I have a free jungle improvement resource and a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly coaching classes, Q&As, patch note rundowns, private high elo streams, as well as a private jungle discord. And I know how to make junglers convert from low elo to gold to emerald to diamond to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anybody you know, jungle diff every game you play, head to vakayu.gg. Uh, you should not be this slow crossing from blue to red side, but regardless, she is fast. Now, her full clear isn't exactly, you know, Kafis or a Fiddle or even Zyra at that particular case, but it is reasonably quick enough that you have no issues, right? Like, you have no issues, your sustain is high, you can still drag camps like this more than other champions. You got the sweet spot damage on your W, you've got a true damage sweep on the outer edge of your Q, you gotta just maintain that Q spacing. Enemy bottom lane are giving disease to this poor Graves fellow. I mean, I, I know he's playing Graves, but come on now. And on the gameplay channel, uh, sorry, this is the gameplay channel, the coaching channel, I just covered a Fiddlesticks game, and there was a Yasuo, also ADC, and I was mentioning how it's becoming a bit more popular at the moment. You lose a little bit of pride, but that's great for ganks, and then you have a lot of all-in potential with hopefully a good support. Now, in this particular case here, we know that the Graves has decided to path down. We know that what his CS was, we know everything, so... At this particular stage, we're just waiting to make sure we can plop down a bit of a trinket ward to get some good vision. And we will wait and place this one just before we extricate ourselves to the nexus, or we won't place it at all. We will hold. There we go. Okay, good. Last second. Sometimes I think people are basing and they're going to place the ward because that's what they should do, and then, and then they don't. But it is a challenging game. So now what this allows us to do is even though we have the timers of the graves, not only do we have them, but we get 100% confirmation. Where are you going in search for a mid lane gank? Beautiful, beautiful ward there. Absolutely love it. Much more intelligent from the mid laner here. Why? Because you know the guy started up here. You know he's probably down here. There's no point warding up mid laners in this particular stage. You don't need to. Because once 2 minutes 30 cross, 2 minutes 30 to 2 minutes 40, you haven't been ganked yet from the top side. It's unlikely that it's going to happen. You know, so most likely the guy's already on the side. So you're most likely going to be ganked from this direction. And that's, of course, the jungle's waiting and waiting and playing unconventionally. But you can't always anticipate those things. And obviously, there's mind games afoot. But this is a good ward. We know he's here. Orianna's just going to bing shill. Kaf is in the mid lane here. I'll adjust the scoreboard for you. There we go. Lilia, in the meantime, has done a full clear. Done a scuttle crab. Done two wards deep into the enemy jungle for visual confirmation. The Graves now, for some reason, is hanging around, hanging around, compromising his sequencing. Absolutely illegal sequence, uh, <laughs> sequencing here. This is astronomically terrible for this level of play. Which is why we people say, hey, jungle is broken, guys. Jungle is broken. Okay, you do it. This is what it can look like. Now, not necessarily field junglers, because a lot of real junglers do this, but a field jungler will play often like this, just suboptimal. In the meantime, the Lilia is already almost finishing her second sequence, right? And the Graves just wasted a lot of time Doing nothing. In the meantime, you're thinking, but how is this jungling, Vrakayu? Well, you know, because jungling is partly getting your own econ and getting huge leads over the enemy jungler. This is why we place these wards in case he does something random. So now we stayed out into the Raptor's Krugs again. So now we know he's either going to gank on the top side here, which will be a little bit silly without basing, or he's going to go back to base and head to the bottom side. 
So what Lilia can do is hedge that very easily because she's fast and basically say, hello, I'm going to gank top lane here because I anticipate Graves will most likely do this. We do hit a bit of a sweet spot true damage. Nog goes in, forces the flash from the uh, Graves there. Karthus hits the button from the mid lane. Hey, nothing we can do about that. We're relaxed. Key for Lilia is be relaxed. Nothing matters here with your laners. Nothing matters with your uh, with your enemy jungler because you can do this. Look at this. You see this E, the slow, the damage, the tick. We're forced to flash to the side. The side is very strong at the moment. But just be relaxed about your game. Absolutely no stress whatsoever. I'm not always a fan of hanging around so much. You know, there's no camps here. I know we're waiting for the Nar to come back because there's an overstay and the, the Graves hasn't gone back to base. Um, and we know we can confidently kill him by ourselves, but the fact that the Silas is here is the issue, and that's why I'm not a fan of this at all. So this has got nothing to do with Lilia. Why waste any more time? But look at this. This is just spawning. So, she full cleared, scuttled, warded, warded, and went back to base. Did this, did this, pushed off, did this, did this. Shout at top. Bef between doing the bottom scuttle and ganking top lane here, this has only now just spawned. That's the downtime you have. That's how quick she is from Krugs to Grump on the second rotation. That's how much time she has before the Krugs spawn again. That's why she can afford to spend a bit of time here doing this. Because, like, if she goes back to base now, the Krugs won't necessarily be up. Caveat is they would have actually just spawned as she arrived, which is a little bit better. But point is, you do have time to do stuff. And that's not to be underestimated. And obviously here, you know, we're just compromising on R a little bit. The Graves gets two assists he shouldn't have gotten, although the one assist here is fine. Uh, I know you beat him 1v1, and I think that's the message for this particular section. However, Lilia, as I said, isn't going to Astro Ruffle Stomp this early game with kills. It's about the experience in gold and the sequencing and how far ahead you can be of the enemy jungler. Graves still has not gone back to base. This is what Freak was talking about, as incorrect as he is on a lot of things. He is right that some junglers can get away with not basing, and that's why he's increasing the HP of these camps. Uh, thereafter, level 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever. Just the scaling's changing a bit. Raptors have 100 HP more level 1. I'm not going to comment on the exact numbers until we see the exact numbers, because who knows if it actually goes through. The most important thing, though, is that the Graves are staying out heavily, and you do have that advantage. We do have a ward here by the Karthus. We're going to smite this, and now, level 6, we want to use it, okay? As long as you sequence efficiently, you get your 6, you want to use it. All in, committed, as I said. Chuck the E. Hit the Q. Free kill. Cool. Scuttle Crab is up. Let's go take it. From our perspective, Graves probably should have reset at this particular stage. He maybe even did his red. Uh, who knows what this guy's actually doing, but what I do know is we have Pryo, no Karthus ult, and we can do a free Hextech Dragon, which is, of course, based. So, we'll go ahead and do that. Play yourself some music. Relax a little bit. Your team show up. Remember, laners, with the... with the, uh... removal of the reduction that we take from Epic Monsters, right? When we have two more people next to us, um, you're going to need to help in those cases sometimes, with certain dragons in certain situations. However, for most junglers who can do dragons and etc. by themselves, and you do it with one extra person, there's no change whatsoever, which I think is a lot of junglers. Now, this is an expected invade from the Graves, but staying out this long is absolutely stupid. Never, ever, ever, ever do this. Boom. Don't think she needed to ult, but... Oof, the damage is high. Oof, the damage is high. You don't need your team there, it's just to help get the lockdown and get the kill, but I'm glad the team rotated the Graves, absolutely insane greed. Yeah, he got the Scuttle Crab, but it's Void Beetle. We know what he's going to do afterwards and invade the blue. Could we have done it as well? Yes, but once this dings, we know he's not doing that. We know he's going to go for our blue thinking we're going for our blue. So you could do this, but in this particular situation, we win so we can rotate. Full sequence completed. Gold amount, 3.6. 500 ahead of the Graves, that's pretty good. If you're 500 gold, if you're 500 gold ahead at, at 50 minutes, that's good. And we're at 9 minutes, so. 81 seconds in the alt. Pretty decent cooldown. Uh, Kappa. Such a big ultimate. I mean, it's it's not not a tiny cooldown, but it's it's not a gargantuan cooldown either. Graves is going to ult here. Wind wool that. And now we have, uh, oof, Flash to avoid the cow. She's doing Krugs and observing. I think we should be rotating directly, but we are getting movement speed stacks. I think worth probably noting here, I'm kind of selling myself out. <laughs> getting movement speed stacks on our Q. Obviously right here, this is what we want to do here. You see that? Up to four times, we stack. We gain bonus movement speed. It allows us to rotate actually even quicker. And this is where it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Here we got an E swirl seed as well. We don't really need sweet spots. W, Q, dead. 
Now she's 3-1-2, but she hasn't done anything extraordinary. And that's the lesson. She sequenced, she warded, she sequenced again, she made a dumb mistake top lane actually. Gank bottom lane with ult, well, gank bottom lane with ult didn't need the ult, but that's besides the point, took a dragon. Perhaps on another guy making a mistake very, very quickly because of movement speed. Keeps her spacing. You're going to see this again. Look at this. Um, we do miss that one, but we have movement speed stacks. Watch this. Here we go. Auto attack. Swirl seed. We do have a flash. There you go. We didn't actually use a swirl seed at all. The E. We use it now. The point is, it's so tough to lock her down. She goes in and out of fights so quickly. She has copious amounts of damage. A lot of tankiness with the build. It's a total package jungler. Without any risks necessary. And I think maybe that's also the biggest thing. Because obviously I watch all of these things in real time, right? I don't scout these before and I just look and I'm like, what What looks like it could give a good message? And I have no idea. So I open the replay and I, I, I divulge this as it comes to me. Which is why sometimes it's a bit messy. But that's good, you know? Because it's easier to scout this, note everything down and pretend I saw it in real time. You don't. you got to kind of... I like fusing what I would see in real time with what I can see in a replay. And obviously the real analysis, you know, for like when I've written scripts or taken a lot of notes would be on the main channel. But yeah, this is it, man. This is what I see in the games against me. This is what I see in coaching all the time. They just don't need to take risks, which is why this, this tribe push play early uh, wasn't good because you don't need to do it. Like there's no force... That requires you to do this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Graves is obviously here, but the, the Silas goes in here. Drowsy, 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 drowsy. She's gonna flash here. We're gonna bonk. Swoop. So we use the W to gap close. Then we swoop with the with the uh, with the Q to get the kill. We know Graves most likely will kill us here. But in a lot of cases, if it's not a ranged champion that have no more gap close, you could actually escape pretty easily, right? But the, there's no reason the Graves should be one two two in this game. But we're still six two two, which is astronomically more than him. And now the gold amount is one point one k. By 12 minutes, 49. 6k gold. By far the most in the game. Um, I don't know why the Rakan is there. I apologize. Uh, no one is even remotely close. And we haven't hit turrets. We haven't gone for plates. All we've done is sequence, kill people, take objectives, hold turrets. You know, we haven't done anything insane except for the top lane tribe wish. That death there with, for the Silas, I think that's fine because we kill the Silas, we give our top laner a reprieve, and if he has a shutdown, which top laners usually have in that particular case, hey, that's nice. And now again, we look at the map, we see, hey, dragon spawning, you're still going back to base, Rakan in the river, I see Orion in the mid lane, Graves was top side. Let me do a quick sequence, but look how quickly we go, because we can still effectively kite camps. Look at this, a lot of champions cannot do this. We have the tick damage, the, the max HP damage, we have the heal, we have the movement speed, we have the swoops. You can go through a jungle so quickly at this stage, that even if you have a rougher early, as long as you lock down your sequencing, you will catch up and ramp up way better than most. Like, look at this. It's a Graves. No slash. And of course, the sequencing is shit, but still, we're hugely ahead. Almost 30 CS. We do get condemned here. The Windwall does miss. TP was committed, as you saw on the turret there. So Karthus does show up, but we can just keep our spacing. Look at this. Keep your spacing. Keep swooping. Keep your stacks going. We have Swirl Seed as well. There we go. No ultimate. Yasuo goes in. Oriana rotates. Beautifully done. Nice little bunk there with a W. We can auto-attack Q again once more. There we go, another auto-attack. And we would have had to Q up again as well. And that's... Uh-oh. No, we live! Yeah, of course we do, because it's a rank 1 card. There's and he's not exactly ahead. Doesn't do as much damage as you think. Now we get a Mountain Dragon. So, what happens when you add... Movement Speed. Kite Ability. Healing. True Damage. Percentage Max HP Damage. 1.5 Second Sleep. With Mountain Dragon and Tanky Atomization. Total package. Total package. And the selling point is no risk required at all. No risk required. Because all of these fights you can take without putting yourself in danger because of the kit. And your sequencing is so damn quick that any mistake the enemy jungler makes gets compromised and gets them punished. Especially in challenger level. 100% in challenger level. And even though we gave them a freebie tribe, which we're like, hey, you know, I got so much time before Krugs, might as well try something. That's giving yourself permission to fail. Which is important as a jungler here. You know, the, we can say in replay, look, don't do this. But in game, the guy knows not to do this. He knows this is not a play to make. Or she knows. This is not a play to make. So basically what you do is, you say, hey, maybe I can kill the Graves before the Silas arrives, right? That's the idea. But look at this. This is a Silas. Yeah? That's a Silas. 
who most of us know will not die initially and then turn the fight with his W over and over and over again. Very difficult to handle when he's fat and strong. She just eviscerated. Just, just destroyed him. And you can easily get 20 to 30k or more in a longer game, but easy 20 to 30k healing on Lilia. If you don't get at least 20 to 30k healing on Lilia, you're not playing it properly. At minimum, that should be your goal in most games, all right? Look at this. Swoop, sleep, dodge, bonk, auto, swoop. Done. You'll see that again in slow motion. We're doing that now, okay? We have a two-level lead. We have 11 mesh eyes. We have here uh, the Andrews. All we do is we go a little swoop there, which, of course, we can use our R to proc. The guy's going to Q before he sleeps, so we're going to use the MS to dodge that. Here we go, we walk around it all, we use a W to get the sweet spot damage, we auto attack, and then we swoop true damage out of reg, get the kill. So easy, so breezy. So I hate this champion so much. You have the wall, so the camp comes to you. There we go. I really hate facing this champion, but I tweeted out yesterday. Look, there is skill in seeing a good lily. There's skill in seeing any champion. If you're playing an easy champion, oftentimes the gameplay is harder because you're predictable and you have to outplay people a lot in terms of knowing what they do, right? And using your simple kit to play complex kits. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're playing an easy or difficult champion. None of this stuff really matters at the end of the day, right? We use it for memes and whatever, but it's, it doesn't matter at all. You play what you want to play, that's it. But, this is a very easy way to get a lot of LP. You're feeling stuck in the jungle at the moment. You're feeling like, you know, where's the Diana? You know, like, you remember Tank Diana? We could just sequence and alt a few people and beat everybody because you got objectives no one can kill you. This is that version. It's easy to play. You have to take no risks, and as a jungler, that means your fundamental jungling will get stronger. Yes, you'll be carried by the champion, but as long as you're focusing on what about the champion allows you to win with her, you're climbing in both respects. The problem with these kinds of champions a lot is that you get people inflating themselves with the kit, with how she, strong she is at the moment, with the itemization, with the nature of the game, and the problem with that is they don't bring their jungling up because they don't understand why it's so good. Which is why I'm making this video. I'm showing you. This is why she's so good. Understand it, play around it, and then utilize that. So when she does get nerfed, which she should do, or she gets changed in some capacity, or the game changes, you don't go down again because you can find another champion that exudes these same principles, and then you'll stay where you are. And then in that way, you're not inflated at all because you escalated your jungling with the champion, right? So do understand what I'm saying from an educational standpoint, not the emotional... Uh, meme stuff I do like, oh, I hate Shoko, stupid. I love watching a great Shoko. I despise the champion, right? You know I hate the cheese and the way it works in general, but a good Shaco is beautiful to watch because of the mind, right? The way they utilize the kit. And I think it's the same for every single champion. Watching a good person on anything is just wonderful. So keep that in mind. The jokes and the memes from the serious educational aspect never feel like you were boosted. I sent this out in an email today. I never feel like you're boosted by your champion, unless, of course, you don't put in the effort to understand why, right? You've got to understand why. And if you do, and hopefully this video helps you, you'll see exactly what you can do when, you know, you're looking for another champion to play. Bonk! 10 to 8, 18 takedowns in 18 minutes, huge heals, yet the game is not over. Why? Because the Silas is shoving in. The map is a little saggy. We talk about this a lot uh, lately. Look at the red team's map. You look at this, you're like, huh, they must have a, maybe they have a gold lead. And then you see they have bounties, right? You see the map is kind of sagged in a little bit. And they look at it, and the reason is because the Lily is 10,000 gold. She's 3,000 ahead of the enemy jungler. She is 1.6 ahead of the nearest member, which is the Fed Vein. Okay? She's the reason there's a bounty. So when you're this Fed, comes with a lot of responsibility. Unfortunately, for the Vein, you happen to be a Lilia. So she can condemn you all she likes. We have movement speed, we have a... Uh, we have an Oriana, we can just miss the Swirl Seed, Sweet Spot, that was a lot of Sweet Spot damage. Uh, we'll just swoop de dupe that, there we go, next dragon is up. Powerful, powerful, powerful champion when fed, and impossible to lock down and kill because of the nature of the builds. Demonics is built, we can go ban Banshees, frequently we go Banshees, why? In this particular case, eat the Condemn, countered Vein. Edge of Night, countered Vein, that's why we want that shield. We're like, well, Edge of Night's not so good, it's great. If you're an assassin or someone who wants to jump on people, then the one thing that can kill you is them CCing you as you do that. Now, if you have Edge of Night, the Rexar can't knock you up, etc, etc, etc. And of course, it also works against the Carfus ult. Do we love ourselves a good bit of good Carfus? This is obviously not one of those good Carfus games. But remember, he can scale. Does scale. Will scale. It's a case of making sure you close the game out. So that first dragon, absolutely nuts versus Carthus and all these kinds of champions. You do want those resistances. They're really, really useful. Here we go. E over. 
Alt is available. We have to decide whether or not we want to use it. We can do it. Maybe we got some Q flash this game. I don't know if we'll have a Q flash combo. Could do. There he is. Swoop. Look at the back line. Look at the back line. Look at the back line. Look at this. Boom. Dead. Guy's dead. Is the target point text is showing? No, he's okay. It didn't pop up. Here we go. Look at the spacing. Look at the spacing. Look at the spacing. It's a cow. We know the engage is coming. There we go. Now we can use our sleep. There it is. Stuck in position. Get the kill. Nice tick damage, obviously, but applies afterwards, just in case you didn't know. When awakened, they take an additional uh, 294 magic damage. So maximize that sleep time. Maximize the extra, extra damage you have. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Bonus damage from the entrance is 1500. It's her. It's her kit here. It's the pixie dust. The dream laden bow. The dream dust. Ooh. There's not a lot of champions, and even Belveth is strong. Belveth is strong and powerful. We all know this. The champion needs to be nerfed, but she does carry inherent amounts of risks. Risk, Briar 2. They have to commit. They have to go in, and if they're not fed or they're mispositioned or they do it wrong, they will die. They will get blown up. If they try the aggressive early game plans without a solid foundation of understanding why they're doing shit, no good tracking, they will lose and they will die, right? Belveth just gets to cover that up a bit more because of the uh, the... The, uh, the, the prawns that she summons and the fact that Herald is so strong in her and the fact that she can just get a few resets and pop off. And with Stride Breakers, a lot of busted. She is getting nerfed, 100%. But Lilia has not put herself in any compromising position at all this game. Look at this. Four levels up. Chuck a bit of drink. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the damage. He just hit one E. He slowed for 10,000 years. He ults to create space. She's got another one very soon. She's going to flash the wall here if she needs to. Like, the slow. Okay, for 40... Three... Three, <laughs> three seconds, um, slow, forty percent while getting tick 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 by dream dust, and being revealed. Overloaded, too strong. Should be nerfed, honestly, but she doesn't have the play rate. She doesn't have the presence, and that's why I'm making this video to say, hey, yo, guys, let's make this play rate big. And also, I just want you guys to climb. At the end of the day, I want every excuse me. I want everyone to climb. This is how you do it right now. Belveth will be pickle banned. Briar will be pickle banned. Um, you've got Jarvis running around. You've got Shoujins, Leesons, Black Cleavers, Gold Drinkers, a lot of HP. And I said this in the meta counter video on the main channel where I covered Lily as well. Just play Lily at percentage. Max HP damage is your friend here. You've got your passive. You've got your true damage if they build resistances. You've got movement, uh, move, <laughs> movement speed ability, I was going to say. Against, look at this, condemn, oh no, I was condemned, this is so sad. Uh, you know, it's so sad that I've, that I've, you know, oh no. Anyway, you know, very much Jeremy Clarkson vibes here, because you just keep coming, you just keep the stacks, and we keep coming, there's three stacks, there's four stacks, bonk, sweet, um, sweet spot damage, true damage, outer edge on the, on the Q there. You just keep coming, there's nothing stopping you, the rotations are fast, they're fluid. Here we go. Here we go. Insane. Absolutely insane. When you're this fed, really, you know, it happened years ago already. Um, there was a, a guy I ran into as the uh, minions almost hit the nexus there. So yeah, there's this guy a couple years ago, it, it would just make these new accounts, make these new accounts, literally, and just go with literally just, and even now still doesn't. Um, and Hyelo still climbs to 1k LP very easily with Lilia. The champion can just enable so much when you understand the limitations and also just why it's strong so inherently i think personally for me it's it's if i do lock her down with cc and you need a lot of cc to lock her down and burn her down because of the fact she can build so tanky with these items here the zonis and the banshees and so on I, I do think the heal needs to go i would compensate her clear if necessary but because pets now exist right that heal when it was put in doesn't need to exist as it does now i think that's uh, something to talk about um, I'm okay with her damage, but she needs to be able to be killed if she's caught out. And I feel like any champion where it's really tough to kill them when they're caught out, it can just feel a little bit irritating. Again, balance. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I just said feel, right? Like, now we use our emotions rather than our objective truths. Because feel is an important part of the game here. We did hit an E, so we can just put them to sleep. Nice little R uh, by the NAR as well. Little knock-up. Beautifully done. Banshee's Veil completed. 25 stacks. This is it, man. And it's with 24 minutes, full build, level 16. No one can hold a candle to Bambi. Here she goes. Chucks another E. Procs the, the uh, Hex Drinker there. It's not going to help you. More, more of Mamortius. And that'll be game, my friends. So, we're looking at Dark Harvest here. We have uh, 2,800 damage. 
Uh, 1100, 1200 by Cheap Shot, which is pretty proud for the course. Wait, if you use Cheap Shot on the jungle, 32 stacks. 32 goddamn stacks of Dark Harvest. You are over electric, you proccing each time you use it at this point. Massive. Massively strong champion. Get your free LP today. Matchups do not matter whatsoever. Low risk, high reward. Damn. You agree or not? I don't think you can disagree at this particular stage, but... Uh... Hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching. Can you guys end the game? I'm trying to wrap up a video here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Before Karthus ults and kills everybody. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, GG for all the good shit. See you in the next video.